Hello, this is Gary at Jack Raven Bushcraft. Thank you for watching our video. Uh, so this week I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about natural tinders. So I hope you enjoy. So I've done videos previously around natural tinders, but kind of specific categories of natural tinder. So in the past, I've looked at um, outer barks as a tinder. I've looked at inner barks as a tinder. Um, more recently, I put together a video on using uh, fungus as a tinder. And I've also done a video around using downy flower heads as a tinder. So those four broad categories. Of course, there are always some things that sort of don't fit into any of those categories, and I want to look at a few of those uh, today. So I've got a few things here that we can take a look at. So um, uh, this one, this is so I've got here. I've got bracken, um, bracken ferns, that kind of thing. The, these work really well. Um, the bra bracken and ferns are quite late to arrive in the year, so uh, from, from our green plants, and it means that they tend to die off uh, quite a lot later as well. So you know, it, you're going to be well into the autumn before you start to find bracken or ferns in this kind of condition where they've where they're really um, brown. What I've found with these, they work. So these will go up nicely with a um, a fire steel. You can ignite them with a fire steel. They work really well as a tinder bundle as well. In fact, so if you've got created an ember via um, bow drilling, that kind of thing, you could quite happily make a, a tinder bundle out of out of these. Where I found them laying on the ground, even if they feel as if they're dry. I've always found it more difficult to get them to, to light than those that I've found that are still kind of growing upright. Um, so yeah, I think my, my advice on that would be if, if you come across bracken for, or ferns, try to go for the ones that are still uh, off the ground as opposed to the ones laying on the ground. Um, yeah, it, it just kind of definitely seems to make it a little bit easier. Uh, next up then, actually, so... Um, I I did a video uh, last week, in fact, around lighting a fire via a bow drill, and I used hay in my tinder bundle. But of course, hay it's it's just dry grass, uh, and there are literally hundreds of different kinds of um, grasses out there. Uh, this one is um, a moorland grass that I picked up. I don't know, maybe six. I, th I think six years ago, possibly eight. I can't quite remember. On a uh, on a course we were running on the Isle of Arran in um, in Scotland. Um, I don't know what species it was. It, it doesn't matter, in fact, what, what the actual species of grass is here. I know that it's a grass. I know that it's dried out. I think that if I remember, the locals were calling it um, blowgrass. Uh, so again, this will... Um, this w w makes a really good tinder bundle, actually. Um, with a little little perseverance you can also get this to ignite straight off from a fire steel of course if you've got matches or a lighter then up it's going to up it's going to go so any dried grass essentially is going to be good this one so what i've got here is gorse uh, so i grew up in the west country uh, my dad was a firefighter and every few years, and I, I kind of remember this quite vividly as a child, every few years he'd be gone for a few days because there would be a gorse fire along the, and it was often along the cliff top, so a lot of the, large parts of the um, coastline in, in Devon, Cornwall, um, you get gorse growing. Um, once the stuff dries out, it is really, really flammable. And I kind of, I remembered that. Um, again, I collected this actually in, in Scotland, and I remembered that these 
kind of big fires that would sweep along and so I thought well okay let's see if I can get it to ignite and sure enough it went up with a lighter okay then I thought I'd try with a fire steel and the issue that I had is that it's actually as a material it's quite coarse and so I was kind of dropping my sparks onto it and the sparks were just falling straight through they weren't actually hitting any of the um, flammable material in there to to ignite and so what I needed to do or what, what uh, was basically squash it down now that's a delicate operation because gorse is pretty well known for the um, the spikes that it has on it so you need to be there you go you can see there they're quite nasty so you need to be um, mindful of the fact that they do have big spikes so you know wear a wear a pair of gloves or something along those lines so that you um, squash it so yeah this works really well in fact um, it goes up like bilio it turns out in fact that um, the the little seed pods that you get on gorse they're airtight and as a, so as a fire sweeps through the air inside it will expand and it kind of pops the the little pods and then and the seeds are dispersed that way um, so it's a plant that's uh, that, that has evolved to be able to not just cope with um, fire spreading through but to actually use it as part of its reproductive strategy So next up I have some, um, some moss, now of course when we think about moss what do we think, well we think about damp places, wet places, that kind of thing and so very often moss is going to be in that condition, it's going to be wet. Uh, so this, I, I found this dead, I didn't, uh, as opposed to kind of peeling it off the ground because that would be very much alive still and, and, and not going to burn so this I found dead still took quite a bit of drying out though before I could actually use it as a um, as a tinder so once you get it nice and dry it is it is nice and flammable uh, a cautionary tale here in fact I came across an account a few years back uh, of a guy who'd built a debris shelter and decided to cover it with moss. Now I'd advise against that anyway, just on an ecological environmental perspective. You pulling all of the moss off the ground causes a whole lot of damage. But nonetheless, um, it covered his debris shelter in it and then lit a long fire in front of his shelter. Uh, woke up in the night to find that the moss that he'd covered it with had dried out um, from the heat of the fire and had ignited uh, so at that point he was in a, a debris shelter that was on fire so yeah be particularly cautious on that guys here i've got so this is this is uh goose grass or cleavers so it's the one that um it looks like a pipe cleaner uh, and you throw it at your mate's jumper and it sticks to it uh, so that that's already starting to grow it's an early one to come out uh, in the spring uh, in fact at this time of the year you could just be you could be picking the tips off it and eating them um, I really like a, a cleaver's cup of tea actually it, it's got a sort of a, a, a pea um, flavor to it and, and I mean garden peas by that as opposed to pea type pea um, it'll grow and grow and grow and by the time it gets to kind of uh, august-ish it's going to all start to die off again and it ends up looking like this uh, it goes up really well so it makes a fantastic tinder bundle goes up with a fire steel uh, what i've found with this or at least in my experience is that when it goes up especially in a tinder bundle you really have to watch the smoke so with a hay tinder bundle you know you're breathing into it all of that kind of thing and the smoke builds and it builds and it builds slowly and you've got a bit of warning with the cleavers what i found is it just goes up it goes up really fast really intense um, hot flame so it just means that you have to be on on the game on the ball and have absolutely everything ready to go so that once this does uh, turn into flame it's, it's on the floor all your sticks on top of it it likes to grow up other things so that it grows up uh, in in hedges in dead hedges it'll grow up alongside fences all of those kinds of things now this is a good thing for us as bushcrafters because it means that 
it's not on the floor which means it doesn't pick up so much moisture uh, and it doesn't rot down particularly fast either um, typically around these parts I've got a few patches around here that I'll go back and visit from year to year and some of them I could go back so sort of, you know, as I say this will die off in sort of August time you could go back I mean essentially now this time of year and still find it so it's a, if you find the right spots it, it's available for um, most of the year so it's a, definitely a, a good one to, to watch out for um, ah so in here I have so these are some pieces of fat wood so this is often sort of regarded as almost like a holy grail type um, thing with uh, with bushcrafters. So this is a piece of fatwood. So what is fatwood? Fat to fatwood is wood for, uh, and kind of like super saturated resin wood, um, mostly from pines. Uh, some spruce will sometimes produce fatwood as well. So resinous conifers basically, and you find it where well, perhaps a tree has been um, cut down and the stump is in it, it remains so it kind of the roots continue to pump for a little while the tree doesn't quite figure out that the rest of it's missing and so it'll continue to pump resin uh, and so you end up with this yeah this kind of super saturated wood the other thing that sometimes happens is if a branch gets snapped off and there's just kind of a, like a little stub left behind again the tree will continue to pump resin into it and so you end up with this really saturated resinous um, wood I don't know if you'd see on the camera the, the colors in this are just absolutely fantastic you could you could see all of this kind of like marbling effect running down through it um, and it smells wonderful as well it's really good stuff so with this you can um, you could feather stick a little bit of that you can just shave bits off um, if you're still perfecting your knife skills then you could just kind of batten down this to make it a little bit smaller and put it in a pencil sharpener basically and just turn it around and get your, your shavings off um, that way so I, I do like fat wood there are um, variations of this that that are out there commercially so you can get this kind of stuff so these are just fatwood shavings in here essentially um, now th this particular one comes from um, Central America and it is from sustainable forestry but nonetheless there is a carbon footprint of dragging this stuff from Central America to the to the British Isles um, especially when we have lots of conifer plantations in this in this country uh, and so it is reasonably straightforward to go out and find anyway um, so yeah these kinds of things exist but I, I would just say yeah think about the carbon footprint on it before you buy this it's probably much more fun to go out and try to to find your own uh, I just want to remind you a little bit here I say this on all of the videos I've done around natural tinder so th these two rules that I have so one is don't wait until you need to light a fire before you go off to find your tinder so just be an opportunist about it as you see a tinder source stick it in your pocket uh, and, and so that you've got it ready for when you do want to light a fire uh, and the other message I, I always give out on these videos is that uh, you should experiment so again as you're walking along if you're walking through the woods and you see something and you think wow I wonder if that would work as a tinder well try um, take a lighter to it and and see what's happening and so a couple of years ago I did I did that I was um, down in the new forest with Nicola and we found a, um, a dead tree it was uh, it, it had fallen over it laid on the ground the bark had got a lot of the bark had peeled off or fallen off I should say and there was all a, all of this kind of thing growing out the tree all of this and I, it took me a, I was kind of puzzled for a little bit looking at it and trying to understand what was going on and then it struck me of course these are um, these are roots from 
ivy. So the tree had obviously been covered at covered in ivy before it died, and as it, after it had fallen down, the ivy itself had died away, and um, but it had left all of this into the inside. And so um, I took a lighter to it to see what would happen, and yeah, it didn't it didn't work. But as I say, that's that's not a failure that because now i've still got a, i've still got some knowledge from that i know i now know what this is and i now know that in fact as a tinder it's not likely to be particularly useful so so sometimes the things that don't work are as useful to you as the things that that do work because it, it's all adding to your bushcraft knowledge base so yeah get out there try all of these things and sometimes you've got to have success sometimes you're not so um that was as i say guys that, that's just kind of those few natural tinders that don't necessarily fit into the, the your four broad categories of um downy flower heads fungus inner bark outer bark it's those those little odd ones that just sit outside of those four um but i hope this is going to be of use to you i hope this is something now that you will be able to um go off or, and these things are now tinders that you can look for yourselves on your bushcraft adventures so um yeah with luck it's going to be useful to you uh we will be hoping to get some more content out next week so in the meantime uh if you haven't done so already please subscribe to our our blog or to our youtube channel to make sure that you don't miss out on future ca uh future content uh in the meantime take care stay safe <laughs>